Okay, Big Block Chevy guys, we're looking to make 600 horsepower. What cylinder head do we use? A giant rec port head or a tiny little oval port head? This is a good one. In this video, we're gonna demonstrate what happens when you upgrade from a factory rec port head to an aftermarket aluminum head. We replaced a set of factory iron rec port heads with 320 cc intake ports with a set of oval aluminum heads from Airflow Research with 265 cc intake ports. So we've got a big change from iron to aluminum. We've got a change from rec port to oval port. We've got a change in port volume and a big change in average flow rate. Let's check it out. Okay guys, if you are a big block Chevy fan, I have got news for you. If you take a look right up here in this corner, I'm gonna go ahead and list a playlist that has all of the big block Chevy videos in one area. So all you have to do is click on that playlist. There's nothing but big block stuff. That's where all the NA and stroker stuff is. But if you're a big block Chevy guy looking for information on nitrous, turbo or blower, check out this playlist right here. I'll put the link up, check all those out. I have this broken down on my channel all of the engine families. I have NA stuff and I have turbo blower, you know, power adder stuff. I have it for small blocks, for big blocks, for Fords, for Chevys, Dodge, you name it, LS. All of them broke it down that way, so check them out. As we indicated in the introduction to this video, big block guys have been indoctrinated from the very beginning that the way to go with performance big block is to have rectangular port heads. And the reason for that, as we talked about, is because the, all of the factory performance offerings had rectangular port heads and the lesser pedestrian offerings all had oval port heads. And while that may have been true back in the day when all we had to choose from were rectangular factory port heads or oval port factory heads, after the aftermarket set in, uh, stepped in, obviously that all changed. So what I wanted to do in this test is demonstrate what happens when we compare the rec port factory heads to a set of good uh, aftermarket oval port heads. And in this case, the test is even more than that because we went from a 320 cc rectangular port head down to a very small AFR 265 oval port head. So not only are we comparing a rec port to an oval port, but we're comparing a dramatic change in port volume from 320 cc's down to 265 cc's. And we're also comparing it not on a mild combination. We're comparing it on a combination where we're making 600 horsepower on a 454, or in this case, it's actually a 468. So if a guy was building a 600 horsepower big block, would he choose instead of these small 265cc oval port heads? As we'll find out, he probably should. So to get things started, we started off with a 468 inch uh, big block build. This one had forged internals. It had 23cc dome pistons, which put the compression over 10 to 1 in this combination. These are from these are SRP pistons. We had a decent sized camshaft in it. We'll talk a little bit about the camshaft relative to the head flow later on. But the camshaft came from Comp Cams. It was an extreme energy line. It was a 540-560 lift a 242-248 degree duration, and 110 degree lobe separation angle on it. I think that this cam was an Extreme Energy 294. It was a hydraulic roller. This one also had a Mylodon oil pan and windage tray because oiling is an important part of the success, the success of a big block. You want to make sure that you don't have windage. You want to make sure, obviously, that you don't overfill the oil pan, which is a big thing on big blocks. When you see a pan that they stay this pan is a seven quart pan. Almost never do we run seven quarts on that pan. This is a perfect example of that. So we had our camshaft, we had our compression, and then what we did was run two sets of cylinder heads. We ran a set of factory 088 casting iron rectangular port cylinder heads. They had a, two, a 219 188 valve package. They had 320 cc intake ports, and they had 119 cc combustion chambers. That head flows, and I'm gonna go ahead and put up the airflow figures here at the end, but that, that head flowed about 328 CFM on our airflow bench. We equipped that combination with two and a quarter inch dyno headers. It had one seven roller rockers on it. It also had um, a YN Team G single plane intake and a Holley 950 carburetor. So this was a fairly decent big block uh, with factory iron, you know, rectangular port heads. So equipped with that, our combination produced 541 horsepower. 
and 513 foot-pounds of torque. So as we know from the airflow numbers of 328 TFM, this rectangular port, big block head, will actually support a fair bit of power on the right combination. But on this motor, we were in the 540 horsepower range. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we installed the Airflow Research 265 heads. After running our 088 iron rectangular port big block Chevy heads, it was time to install the aluminum Airflow Research 265 heads. And as I said, it's a big jump in not just port shape, because actually that's less important than actually the flow rate and the port volume is. And as we saw, we have a 320cc rectangular port iron head, and we're comparing that to a 265cc oval port Airflow Research head. In addition to that, in addition to the port size and port volume, we also have airflow differences. So before I put up the, the change in power offered by the cylinder heads, I want to show you here are the airflow numbers of the two heads. Now, if we take a look at the peak numbers, which is what everybody likes to talk about, we have 328 CFM for the iron rectangular port heads and 345 CFM for the oval port 265 airflow research aluminum heads. Now, just, you know, right off the top of your head obviously the airflow research head flows a little bit more you know not a ton 328 versus 345 but take a look at all of the airflow gains in the mid lift because that's really what changed the power output on this combination it wasn't the peak lift and we know that because <laughs> we never saw the peak flow numbers that i gave you the 345 and the 328 come at 700 lift or 650 lift well our camshaft was <laughs> only a 560 lift cam, so it never got up to take advantage of that additional flow at that lift value. But what it did do is take advantage of all the additional flow in the low and mid lift ranges. So take a look at these airflow numbers, <laughs> talks amongst yourselves, <laughs> figure out which one you think would be better on a given combination. Now our airflow research head, as I said, 265 cc intake port, it flowed 345 CFM. The peak flow has really good, as we see, mid lift uh, flow numbers. It had a 219, 188 valve package, just like the other big block Chevy heads. It did have a slightly smaller combustion chamber, 112 cc's. And I know right away guys are gonna comment and I want you guys to comment, well, yeah, but you have a smaller chamber, so that's where all the power comes from. It comes from a change in compression. Well, first of all, we only went down seven cc's in chamber size. So that's less than a half a point in air fuel. So, or less than a half a point in, in static compression ratio. So that's gonna gain about one and a half to 2% increase in power. So that's not a big change by itself. And that's not really where the power can come from. I'll give you a hint. Take a look at the mid lift flow numbers. <laughs> That's where all the power is going to come from. But the, also, the other thing I wanted to point out about this airflow research head is it has a small chamber size or a small, uh, yeah, the small chamber size. It also has a small uh, intake port volume. So it is a really good head upgrade for, say, a Gen 5 junkyard motor because that has a bigger chamber in 119 to 121 or 22 cc's, depending on which one you have and how they actually measure out putting a something like the airflow research there are obviously others available out there too but putting something that has a smaller chamber will increase the static compression ratio of a motor that you go get from the wrecking yard and they all need that because they're all very very low so a small chamber head upgrade on something like that is a really good idea so if you take a the the throttle body injected peanut port headed like gen 5 big block and put a set of heads like this airflow research head on it's a really good upgrade combine that with a cam and obviously good things will happen so that's why i like this 265 head it comes that way it comes with that chamber size so it's a good upgrade but here's what happened when we installed that airflow research 265 on this combination let's take a look at our So the peak power with the Airflow Research head upgrade jumped up to 622 horsepower. That's a big change in power from a cylinder head upgrade. The peak torque jumped up to 569 foot-pounds of torque. And the thing that I liked about this is not just that, you know, we got a big peak power number, which you can get from a big head upgrade, but this thing improved power everywhere, all the way through the curve. And if we continue to test it down at you know, 800 RPM or all the, uh, I want it to be off idle test. If we, even if we ran it down there, this 265 head would just be better than the big rec port iron head everywhere. And that's always a good combination because you would feel this kind of power. You'd obviously feel the extra power and it would, you know, mile an hour and ET better, but this thing will just be better 
it'll be more fun everywhere. As soon as you step on the gas, through all the gears, through all the RPM range, this is this is the these are the kind of results that you want to have when you do a head head upgrade. Because let's face it, an airflow research head is not a cheap date, but it does it does especially on this combination offer plenty of power. But I have one other test for you that I want to take a look at. Here's what happened, and for you guys that would be thinking, hey, that's great, except that I don't want a real high RPM deal. What about a mo more mild mannered combination? Well, here's what happened. The green is what happened when we installed a dual plane RPM air gap on this thing, and the power peak power dropped down as we would expect, but it was still over 600 horsepower, 601 horsepower. But take a look at what happened to the, the power curve, the red and the green here, below 4700 RPM. This is where the dual plane intake really shines. So we had uh, a gain of 529 to 563. So we had over 30 foot pound gain with the dual plane down low. So if you had something that you wanted to drive around and you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of the top end power, again, crossover here is at 4800 RPM. If you want to sacrifice that top end power and have more drivability, more throttle response, more torque down low, and still a 600 horsepower combination, that Airflow Research 265 head combines really well with the dual plane intake. And one thing we didn't try that I would have liked to try is we could have put a uh, like a half inch um, or one inch carb spacer on this and probably picked up more top end. But again, as always, we would have traded a little bit of the bottom end. But here's some good combination shows you what a cylinder head upgrade does and what a small oval port head can actually do. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what'd you think about our test upgrading the factory rec port iron heads with a set of aftermarket aluminum oval port heads from Airflow Research? Obviously, an aftermarket head always going to be better than the factory stuff. I mean, that shouldn't be rocket science. The cool thing is we made dramatic changes in port volume, and we went from a rec port to an oval port. All of that stuff is good. It just goes to show you, <laughs> rec port heads, you don't have to have that big, giant port to actually make power. In fact, sometimes having the smaller port adds even more. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Do those notifications. I'll keep testing.